Hey guys, Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com here today. I want to talk about one of my favorite issues today, and that is creativity. I love talking about this, specifically what is creativity, because it's such a mysterious thing. Um, the mind in general is such a mysterious thing, but especially creativity. But if we learn a little bit about what creativity is, maybe we can avoid things like creative block, writer's block, you know, logo design block, any of these blocks that cause us to procrastinate, or maybe in some way we feel cause us to produce bad work or something. Um, so let's spend a couple minutes to talk about what creativity is and maybe if you start to understand what creativity is and maybe how you can make yourself a little bit more of a creative person, it can really help um, as far as just helping you conjure up ideas and work on design projects and write that book that you've always wanted to write, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what is creativity? Um, well, one thing we can say about creativity is we know when we've been creative, but how can we get more of these creative moments and is there a way to sort of summon them on demand. Um, now I've done a bunch of research, read some books, watched a bunch of presentations by a bunch of different really smart people, people who are smarter than I am, uh, certainly, and I've put together just this sort of short presentation that we're going to go through. So we're going to start with uh, some science. So there's a study at Northwestern University as well as Drexel University where they did a whole number of tests, but what I want to focus on are these these sort of problems or questions that they came up with called compound remote association problems and the um, the acronym for it is CARP, CRAP, so maybe that is uh, enough said about them, but uh, an interesting little creative problem solving puzzle, if you will, um, that will apparently help to boost your creative skills as well, or so I've heard. Basically the way these work is you take three words and there's one word that'll sort of join all three of the words or, or create a compound word out of all three of the words. So I've got this first example here, right? French, car, shoe, and here, boom, we see the answer. French horn, car horn, shoe horn. So French horn, car horn, separate words, but very, very closely associated and shoehorn one word. So here's another problem for you. Check this out. Room, blood, and salts. And the joining word is bath. Bathroom, blood bath, and the oh so famous bath salts. Now, if you were able to come up with that word bath, before you checked out the slide and saw bath, and by the way, you can Google and find a ton of these different problems uh, to look at and solve and try to figure out. If you came up with the word bath before you saw the slide with the answer, you had one of these little instantaneous moments of creative insight where your mind made this connection that it had maybe never previously made before. All right, so what these scientists noticed was when, when they would give these students these problems, they when they figured them out, the students that figured them out, Right before they had this moment of creative insight when they discovered the answer to the problem, they had activity in a small part of their brain called the anterior superior temporal gyrus. And it's this little part of your brain kind of over here behind your brain, um, behind your brain, behind your ear, excuse me. Um, and, and it was this little area of the brain that was really firing up and going crazy right before one of these moments of creative insight. So this area would really, you know, boom, 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 be hit hard in the student's mind right before the student was able to successfully answer one of these compound remote association problems. So what the scientists went on to discover is that it is in fact this anterior superior temporal gyrus uh, that helps us to understand things like comedy and metaphor and idiom, uh, sort of the idea of a play on words, right? So metaphor, uh, the typical teenager's room is a disaster zone. It's not really a disaster zone, but kind of it is a disaster zone, but not really, right? It's not really a disaster zone. Um, and then idiom, something like, is it really a piece of cake? Why does it cost an arm and a leg? Uh, cool your jets. There's all kinds of different things that, you know, every language has different idioms and idiomatic usages of words and phrases. And it's this part of your mind that helps you make that connection and say, oh yeah, of course, I get what they're talking about. Um, even though maybe you've never heard the idiom before. So this should be easy, right? I mean, if we can f just fire up the anterior superior temporal gyrus, we should be able to just have creativity on demand. Well, the researchers kind of concluded that you can't really work with it that way, um, but you can put yourself into a state uh, where it is much more likely that that part of your brain is going to fire up. And you do that by relaxing. The more you're able to relax, the more creative you become, which is interesting to note because if you ever watch documentaries on some of these big game studios or big creative agencies, sometimes they have a mandate. They require you to play a certain number of maybe video games or billiards or foosball or have community activity for a certain number of hours a day. 
Um, and, and these are studios cranking out some of the most amazing either video games or graphics or, you know, national, international ad publications uh, and so on and so forth. So just interesting to note that. So the idea is that if you're able to break focus on the problem that you're trying to solve, the answer, will sort of, the answer excuse me, will sort of just come to you. Have you ever been having a conversation with somebody and you try to, you're trying to remember whatever that little stupid detail is and you just can't remember it? You leave the conversation, you get in your car, you drive home, and when you're driving home, boom, it pops back into your mind because you've stopped thinking about it. You started thinking almost around it, allowing the idea or the thought to come back to you. And you've, you've stopped stressing about it or worrying about it or trying to force your mind to make the connection. And lo and behold, boom, your mind just makes the connection. So if you relax, ideas are born. And if you're, if you're faced with a creative problem, instead of getting stressed out about it, relax and let the creative solution flow to you. Trust the creativity. It's kind of this crazy cyclical effect where the more you relax, the more creative you become. And the more creative you become, the more you realize, hey, I wanna relax more so I can become more creative. And you trust yourself enough that you'll be able to relax even more. And that'll be make you even more creative. And the more creative you become, the more you trust and have confidence in that creativity, therefore allowing yourself to relax more, which makes you, again, more creative. So if you can just break the mold and say, you know what, throw caution to the wind, I'm gonna have fun with it, I'm gonna throw out the idea of stress, relax, these creative ideas will flow to you and, and creative solutions. This is, for instance, why sometimes children say the darndest things, as we say. Um, they, they sometimes come up with these crazy creative solutions or ideas when you approach them about a problem or just other people in general who don't know as much as you do about a certain topic or field. They just throw something out there, not really thinking too much about it, and sometimes it can be a brilliant solution. Whereas the more expert version of you trying to solve the problem. You're thinking at the problem so much that you're not able to think around it and come up with a great solution. So again, relax, ideas are born, trust that creative process, um, and it'll just come to you. There's a really cool infographic, I'll display it on screen here, um, but you should definitely go check it out on the site. I'll make sure I link to it um, in the video, talking about your mind on beer versus coffee. And it's interesting that they note that drink a little beer, get your blood alcohol level up just a little bit, a little bit, and you become a much more creative person. And then when it comes time to start executing the ideas that you've creative, creatively come up with, courtesy of the alcohol, drink some coffee, because of course, when you've drank all the beer, you just wanna kinda of sit back and relax and do nothing. Um, so when, you're, when it's time to work and implement ideas, go ahead and, and bring some caffeine into the picture. But drinking a couple of beers relaxes you. And what do we know about relaxation? If you relax, you're probably going to be a more creative person. And Albert Einstein, who's a pretty smart guy, said creativity is the residue of time wasted. So time wasted, relaxation, going out, having fun. So get out and play. Do something that, that makes you happy. Smile. Go out to lunch with a friend or you know, go out for a jog. Go hit the gym. Uh, jump on and play that video game for an hour um, if, you're, if you hit a block in work. Even if that deadline's bearing down on you. You need to forget about the deadline. You need to loosen up and relax and allow the creative solution to just flow to you. And it'll happen. Um, so encourage creativity and act on it. Just do it, right? All play and no work makes Jack a poor, unemployed, and very often divorced boy. So you need to relax to encourage the creativity and then pound that coffee and just do what you came up with in that creative session or that moment of relaxation where you encouraged these moments of creative insight to be spurned and boom, pop up. So. That's a little taste of what creativity is. I'm kind of dumb myself. I don't know a huge amount about it, but it is something that fascinates me. And I just wanted to share some of the stuff with you guys. If it allows you to sort of think around some of your problems and become a more creative person, hey, that's great. Um, because the, the name of the game is just kind of getting rid of any kind of creative block. When you sit down for work to knock out that new logo concept or that 50 page paper, whatever it is, you will sit down with so much more confidence if you have a creative mind and are able to sit down and just sort of think around the problem, have fun with it, and just do it. So that's it for this one. Make sure you go check out the website. That's www.tutvid.com for more free video tutorials and also more of these Tutvid issue videos where I explore a whole broad range of topics and just have some fun with them. That's it. Thanks for sticking around and watching. Take it easy.